good all over this place he's been mighty good I don't know what he did for you but I know what he did for me somebody ought to that ought to be somebody testimony this morning God did something for me well just this morning he woke me up in my right mind this morning oh my God and I can go further than that he allowed me to get here safely this morning. I didn't get in no accident this morning. I got out the car. I could have stayed in the car this morning. I could have took sick in the car this morning. But look at God this morning. He is a mighty good God. He is a healer this morning. And guess what I'm going to do like grandmother say? I'm going to trust him till I die. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to lean and depend on God this morning. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker this morning. I chose to serve God this morning. How many came to lift up the name of Jesus this morning? How many came to praise him this morning? How many really came to praise the Lord? Oh, what a mighty God he is. Oh, I bless him this morning. I thank him for all that I have. It's because of God this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for the roof over my head. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you this morning. You ought to thank him this morning. He did something for you this week. Did he do it? Did he do it this week? He did something great for you this morning. Great God, Almighty God. I can't help but to praise him. I can see it on your face this morning. God did something this week for you this morning. You weren't even expecting it. He came through. Next week, uh, next week is Father's Day. I want you to bring your saved father and your unsaved father to church uh, 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 church father and unchurch father bring them to church next week fathers bring your children with you to church next week our honored father we got one we, our honored we father is brother Tyrone Clark oh, there he is right there <laughs> I'm going to let the minister come in a few minutes to recognize our graduates we need to do that because since I've been at Lost Street one thing I learned the, the, the young people that came through this church were very, very good at their schools. And they, 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 their grace was super. And uh, they were someone that I was very proud of. Uh, and and uh, so, so we're going to recognize them. We'll have ministers to come and recognize them. So, I'm going to ask you your hands because we need you to work to use your hands in this church. We need your feet for you to go to and for, for you to come to church. Use them to come to church. Use them to go out and just tell somebody. God, the Spirit will lead you to tell somebody that they need to be safe. And to tell them if they're looking for a church home, say, look, I know we got bad streets around it, but we got a good church. Come to Lost Street Baptist Church. I'm proud of my church. I'm proud of my pastor. I love my church, and I love my pastor. You're going to do the same. Why don't you come? Because Jesus Christ, the presence of the Lord, is in this place. June 23rd, 2 p.m., 
Franklin Avenue pastor, the, the great, 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 lovely, kind, charismatic uh, pastor Fred Luter is coming to preach our church 80th church anniversary. Amen. Uh, Pastor Luda is excited about coming, and these former Law Street members all over the place will be coming that day. So I want all of us, we're going to come and we're going to fill our church up, and we're going to have a good time. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, if the names that I didn't hear, you heard them all. And even if I did hear them, you heard them. And someone say, when you hear, oh, Lord have mercy. It's already done, Lord. And so, Master, you know, I, I, I call your name. I call on your name. I call in your name. Your son told us that when we pray, when we pray in his name and believe in our heart, it shall be done. Lord, it's in your word. It's in the Bible. It is in this Bible, which is the truth, which is your word, your inspired word, Lord. It said that when we pray and believe and trust in you, as you tell me every day, all day long, trust you. So, Master, we are trusting you right now. And if we are not trusting you, Lord, lead us into your trust, Lord. Watch over our children, Lord. Continue to bless them and, and, and give them success, Lord, in the life that they are living right now before they get out there in the world. Before, before, before that young lady gets to college, Lord, be with her. Watch over her and keep her, Lord. And we, 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 our children, the security at school is not what it used to be. So we are praying for covering, Lord. Look at my members. Those that are sick, my heavenly Father, but are still here anyway. We don't even know it. But you are working with them. They got sickness in their body. But Lord, you a healer. I declare and decree because the Bible says so. You are a healer. Yes, you are, Lord. And then those of us who are in trouble, you are a deliverer. You are good. You are kind. You are merciful, Lord. Thank you for grace, my heavenly Father. Because had it not been for grace, the wages of sin is death. Had it not been for grace, the wages of sin is death. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin. Grace, thank you for grace. And then, Lord, throw in mercy. Thank you for mercy. We love you right now. Lord, can I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, if any of us walking around with sickness in our body, come healer. Touch right now, healer. Touch Lord Jesus. Touch Lord Jesus. Heal our body and heal our mind and heal our spirit. Because somebody in here walking around with fear in their heart and they are paralyzed. But I rebuke that fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Bless you right now. We be careful to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. Let the church say amen. 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 Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. All my young people are here. Many of them are here. Many of them are here. Because this message is going to be for you. And I'm going to say, as Pastor Smith said during the revival, those who are not young, it is also for you to hear. As I share with you from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 34. Amen? And in your reading, when you get a chance, you sit down tomorrow, this afternoon, this evening, read chapter 33 and 34. But our consecration shall be on 34, verses 1 through 7. And I'm, I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to be slow. Amen? I'm not going to be long, but I will be slow. And we want to bless your heart. Second Chronicles 34, 1 through 7. I don't know how God is going to do. 
something that God has already said he was going to do. Sister Raleigh says the Lord's going to fix it. Whatever is coming in your spirit right now, God is going to fix it. I'm going to say like the Bible, one of the preachers said in the Bible, do you believe that? That God is going to fix it. Now don't play with me now. God is going to fix it. How many of us. Not only got the faith. But got the courage. Got the courage. Then have the faith. To put it. In the Lord's hand. Don't feel bad if you struggle with that because your pastor struggles with that. Amber Jackson, at times I just don't put it in his hand. And then Sister James, I, must, I make a bigger mistake. I put it in his hand, but I don't leave it there. 
I go back and get it. What that's called. That's called worrying about it. They got an old man in his hundred years old on his way to his to the grave, and they asked him, Have you ever worried? He said, I worried about a lot of things in my life, but most of them never happened. Did y'all catch that? I worried about a lot. He was 100 years old, Sister Jack. But most of it never happened. Amen? Second Chronicles chapter 34. And Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one in 30 years. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Somebody say right in the sight of God. And he walked in the ways of David, his father. Someone said walk in the ways of David. And he declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. Someone said turn neither to the right or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, he was yet <clears throat> young. He began to seek after God the, of Dave, the God of David, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the molten image. And they break down, and he, they break down the altars of Balaam in, the, in his presence and the images that were on high above them. He cut down and the groves and the calf image and the molten image he break in pieces and made dust of them and stood it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. And he burnt the, burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. And so did he in the city of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon and unto Naphtali with their maddox round about them. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the grave image into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. Let the church say amen. amen. I want to talk to you today about breaking generational curses. <clears throat> Breaking generational curses. Think about it. Breaking generational curses. I want to talk about these three kings. Uh, the, fa the grandfather, the father, and the son. The grandfather was named Manasseh. The father was named Ammon, A-M-O-N. And the son name was Josiah. And then I want to talk about three others. David, the king of Israel. Jesus, our Christ. And God, our father. Father and son. Breaking generational curses. Manasseh came to power following down the line of King David, one of the sons down the line of King David. He came to power when he was 12 years old. He reigned for 35 years. But the Bible said he did that which was evil in the sight of God. He was an evil king. He did the abomination of heathens, which means he did what those godless people did. The people that God cast out in order to bring Israel in their place. He built high places of which his father, King Hezekiah, had torn down. High places were places of worship for false gods. He, 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 he made groves and in other words, he said he made churches, temples of worship for false gods. He built altars. 
He had the audacity, Sister Pam, to build altars in the house of God for other gods. Listen to me, y'all. He built altars in the house of God for false gods. He did that in Jerusalem. He built altars that would reach, that would point toward the heavens. And then he did something worse than that. He caused his children to walk through the fire, which means he sacrificed his children to false gods. And watch this. Now, it, it, this is way back then. But let's bring it. Some of the things he did is happening today. The Bible says he observed times. Y'all know what that is, y'all? You don't know what observed times is? Your horoscope? Come on. The sun and the moon? Come on, y'all. He, 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 he did enchantments. Y'all know what that is? That's witchcraft. But well, matter of fact, the Bible said he used witchcraft. And then he dealt with familiar spirits. Calling spirits back from the dead. Amen, somebody. Oh, y'all quiet on me. He even worked with wizards. Oh, Lord have mercy. He did everything evil in the sight of God, which means he did it right in the front of God. And I'm thinking about it when I'm watching the news last night. These people, and I know they call themselves celebrating pride life, but they were throwing their fists in the face of God. And God is not happy with that kind of stuff. And don't, we can't criticize just them because when we get out there, we out there in the face of God. Doing some stuff that we should not be doing. They did it. He, 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 he used carved images and we have to watch this. Why would you worship the creature instead of the creator? Amen, somebody. And the one creature that we worship the most is human beings. We worship this human being. Amen? Who made us? God made us. Who we should worship? The creator. Who got the power to take, to give life and to take life? Nobody but God. He is worthy to be praised. We better recognize the fact that he got the power to call us home whenever he want us to want to. It is appointed to a time for a man to die. Guess who makes the appointment? God makes the appointment. Amen, somebody? And we don't even know when our appointed time is. And not only this, he says, the Bible says that he, 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 he continue to lead God's people away from God. Amen, somebody? And, and it, makes, it upsets me that we're going to take to people, in the, especially in America, put our agenda in the front of God and then want to give God the glory and say, God is the one who gave it to me. You are lying. Just like the devil is a liar. God chose that man. No, you are a liar. You chose that man, not God. If you're going to do it, tell the truth. Somebody help me here. Amen, somebody. Tell the truth. Now, now I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to criticize nobody, but I'm going to tell the truth. These things are not of God, and we need to stop putting it on him. But Manasseh was evil, and he committed some things in the front of God. And the Bible says God sent the preacher to tell him and the people that they were doing wrong. And the Bible says that they did not listen to them. And did not, they didn't say listen to the preacher, they said they did not listen to God. Amen, somebody? Be careful how you treat the preacher, the man and the woman of God who's preaching the word of God because it is the word of God. You can get angry at them, but don't get angry at the word of God. You can disobey them, but do not disobey the word of God. God, God got so upset with Manasseh that he sent the Assyrian to come and to punish the people of God. God took, a, took Manasseh and put him in jail. 
put him in prison. And when he got in prison, the Bible says he turned toward the Lord and asked God for forgiveness. Somebody help me here. He reigned 35 years and he did everything wrong. But on that 35th year, God moved him from the throne. There are times, help me somebody. Lord, why are you doing this to me? Well, because you are doing it to me. And, and, and I'm going to do it to you because I want you to get right with me. I want you to repent and turn from your ways. I guess y'all say, Pastor, when the vacation came back rough. Amen, somebody. I just came back to tell the truth. Amen, somebody. My NASA asked for forgiveness. Guess what? God forgave him. Yeah. All of that stuff he did, God forgave him. Somebody help me here. And he was put in the chronicles of the king of Israel. But up come his son. His name was Amon. Amon was 22 years old. And the Bible said he reigned for two years. When you get to 33 and 19, I think it says, I'm wrong with this, but it says that Amon, 33 and 21, Amon was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned only two years. Somebody help me here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be long, y'all. If I am, y'all just got to be patient with me. Amen. He reigned for two years, but the Bible says in verse 22, he did that which was evil in the sight of God, and as his father did, and he sacrificed to carved images. Somebody help me here. Pastor, I want to go into it, but I'm going to keep on going. He sacrificed. He was so evil that people on his own staff killed him. He lasts only two years because he did evil in the sight of God. Uh, uh, Sister Marilyn, he did evil and people were supporting him and pushing him that he had done the right thing and they kept encouraging him. You better be careful how you encourage people to do wrong because God is going to hold that against you. Help me somebody. Give me Barabbas. Help me y'all instead of Jesus Christ. Give me the devil instead of the man of truth. Somebody help me here. Instead of the son of God. When we choose wrong over for God. Then we get to the end of this thing. Up come Josiah, who was eight years old when he became king over Judah. Eight years old. The Bible says when he, when he turned 16, he started to do some things. And one writer says that he spent eight years being trained and counseled by some people. So when he got to be 16, he stood up there, young people, you're never too young to work for the Lord. He started at eight years old. He went to 16 years old. And then when he got to be 28, he began to do more for the Lord. Somebody help me here. Y'all quiet on me, but I'm going to close it right here. Watch what Josiah do. How, pastor, do I break generational curses? Somebody help me here. Because your daddy was no good does not mean that you have to be no good. Because mama was, help me y'all, I won't call some names out here. You don't have to be that way. Can I bless somebody? Because you got some low down cousins, you don't have to be low down. And because your, cousin, your cousins went that way, that does not mean that's how you gonna go. Somebody help me. I'm talking to somebody up in this place right now. That does not, because God put that in my spirit, it's not going to happen because God has spoken this word. Help me somebody. Uh, 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 generational curses, generational curses, because you were born into poverty does not mean that you have to stay into poverty. Hallelujah, somebody. Ain't God all right? Because you were born in an abusive, because you are caught up in an abusive relationship, you can grow out of that relationship. Because you are a child of evil and uh, of, of evil parents does not mean that you have 
to be evil. Manasseh was evil, but he repented. Amon came on, he was evil, but he did not repent. I want you to notice something. Manasseh had a chance to repent. Somebody help me here. Josiah was born already safe, but Ammon never gave himself a chance to be safe. Never gave his chance self a chance to repent. When I watch these young men get into that life and their mama, their mother have to get on TV and tell people he was a good child. Somebody help me here. After somebody killed him, I want to tell you something, and y'all won't like me. They don't kill them for no reason at all. Oh, y'all don't like that kind of stuff. Some of them were innocent. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of them were not innocent. If you continue to live that life, you will be condemned. Come on, y'all, to continue to live that life. Somebody help me here. Y'all don't like me? Y'all don't like Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Breaking generational curses. Help me, y'all. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't pass those curses on to your children. Oh, y'all don't like that. Come on now. Amen, somebody. I think you, we need to get on our knees and start repenting for all of the stuff that we have done in our past and ask God not to take it out on our children and our grandchildren. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with putting a paddle on that boy's butt and let him know you ain't going to be like your daddy and like your mama. I'm going to straighten your butt out. Yeah. Huh? Now, I spare the rod. You spoil the child. And if you spoil the child and he turn out to be rotten and no good, it's because you spoiled the child. Amen? I think Junior opened oh, two or three whippings. Help me somebody. And he understands that, y'all. I'm saying that. But you cannot do that. We got to break those generational curses and tell our children that you don't have to live like that. You don't have to dress like that to get attention. You don't have to act like that to get attention. You don't have to back that thing up in order to get somebody in your life. Somebody go help me here. You don't have to give that thing up in order to make somebody love you. Help me, y'all. I hope they didn't catch that. We got, come on, y'all. We got to live right. And to do right, come on, y'all. The first thing we know about Josiah, he did what was right in the sight of God. Amen, somebody? And watch this, Leslie. He didn't have a good example to live by because his grandfather was no good. His daddy was no good. And they didn't mention the mamas now, y'all. Come on now. But he didn't have a good example. So what he had to do was to reach way back in his ancestry all the way 60 years before that and catch King David and follow David, yeah. his father. Now watch this. Ammon was his father, but he called David his father. Can I help some young people up in here? You need to look around you and find some spiritual father. Hello. No, Y'all missed that. Hello. I'm right here. I'm, see, y'all missing that. Hello, I'm right here. And find some spiritual mother. Come on, spiritual mother. Tell them you right here. Come on, come on. Y'all not with me here. I'm going I'm to preach a little longer because y'all don't want to get with me right here. We are right here. And you need to follow them, work with them, talk to them, not just for a month, but for years. So they can train you and show you how to live. He said he followed the father. The, the, not only did he follow his father David and walk in his ways, but he worshiped the God of David. Somebody help me here. How in the world could grandmother be a spiritual praying woman? And mama a shouting hallelujah, preaching woman, and you just as devilish as you can be. Something wrong with that picture. Amen, somebody? Uh, and if you got some crazy cousin, does not mean that you got to be crazy. 
If you got some devilish drunk cousin, that does not mean that you got to be drunk. And just like them, help me somebody. Let me get out of here because y'all don't like me. Help me somebody. You got to break the cycle. You got to break the curse. He's just like his daddy. Break the curse. You acting like your mom. Break the curse. Hallelujah, somebody. You ain't going to be like that. Somebody hit my mama was a fussing, come on y'all. She didn't cuss, but she was fuss all the time. And I would say, sister, I said, sister, sister, sister Eckers, I would say to myself, I will not marry a woman that fuss like my mama. Amen. And my wife don't fuss like my mama. But God didn't let me go because my daughter do. Amen. And I, and I love her because she's my baby. Amen? Uh, uh, and, but, 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 but let me tell you something. You got to break the curse. You got to change things. And how you going to change it? You got to act and you got to take the responsibility of changing things. I'm, I'm finished. I think I said it all. You got to change things. You got you to act. You got to have the courage. You got to take up the responsibility to change things. Hallelujah, somebody. You ought to declare and decree and speak to the devil. You got my daddy, but you're not going to have my son. You got to declare and decree. You got my cousin, but you ain't going to have my little sister. Hallelujah, somebody. You got to declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You got my older boy, but you're not going to have my younger boy in the name of Jesus I'm going to pray I'm going to fast I'm going to call on the name of Jesus I'm going to praise because somebody say when praises go up blessing come down ain't God all right I'm going to tell that child every day you better than that you stronger than that you good and you're not bad stop telling your children that they are demons because if you keep it up they're going to end up being a demon ain't God alright declare and decree that they are a child of God they don't have to preach they don't have to sing but they are a child of God in the name of Jesus. Say yeah. Say yeah. Come here, Jesus. Ain't God all right? They call him a devil. He said, no, I'm the son of God. They call him Belzebub. He said, no, I'm a child of God. Ain't God all right? They call him a prophet, a priest. He said, well, that's good, but I am God himself. My father and I are one. Ain't God all right? He died, didn't he die? He was buried, but early, I say early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power, power. I was watching a young man. For I watched him for about 30 minutes. And I went up to him. I said, son, I want you to come back to church so I can train you to take your daddy place in the future. And he said, well, pastor, they took my Sundays away. And I said, okay, I still want you to come back to church. And I told my wife that, and she said, didn't he tell you the Sundays? He took his Sundays away. I said, but honey, the key is, I planted the seed. Y'all missed that? I planted the seed. And that's a seed he'll never forget for the rest of his life. Sister Hazel, let me tell you what I mean when I say speak it into their lives. You go back in the country, some of them not living no more, 
because they got others who heard it. How many times they told me that I was going to preach the word. And I kept saying, I'm too devilish to preach the word of God. I told her, Sister James, I said, Lord, how could I preach if I'm still a sinner? God said, okay, I'm going to fix that. So he changed me right then and there. And then he said, now, nah, what's your excuse now? Go preach the word. Can, can I hit somebody on the head right now? How many times they told you you're going to preach? Bars got quiet in here. I mean, it got so quiet up in here. But pastor, I'm a, I'm a woman. Come on, y'all. <laughs> so he didn't call you to preach. He told you to go teach. I've been too long. I'm finished. Break the generational curse. Break it. Take act and take the responsibility and say, I'm going to change this. Thing.